what's up guys? It is your girl, Coach Leanne, down here at AM Fitness in Plainville. Um, today I am going to be bringing you um, some mobilization and some activation of the feet. Um, this is instrumental in everything that we do, not just working out in the gym, but also in our normal everyday lives. Um, you'll notice that I've taken my socks off. Personal preference if you don't wish to, if you're in the gym trying to do some of this stuff and you don't want to take your socks off because there's a million other people in here, totally reasonable. If you're doing this stuff at home, I would definitely take your socks off. As close to natural as possible, the least amount of cushion and change from the world as possible, the better you're going to be. Um, the reason that we're doing stuff like this is because most of us wear shoes all day long. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so what the, the shoes tend to do to us is they change our perception of what's happening world so like every time my foot hits the ground because I'm wearing shoes and because I have all of this cushion that is now in shoes these days or now I have orthotics in my shoes because I've been diagnosed with plantar fasciitis or this or that whatever it is it's taken away my ability to assess the world around me it has created stiffness in my foot and it's also created weakness in my foot so I can't use my foot to the extent that it's intended to if we think about the foot it's the foundation to everything if I wasn't standing on my feet I would be floating in the air. I need my feet to do everything else in the world. So we need our feet to be mobile and we need our feet to be strong and active so that they can create a good base of stabilization for us. If I think about like a house, the foundation to my house, if the foundation wasn't strong, the house would start like sinking into the ground and you'd have structural issues in the walls and in the ceilings and in the, in the roof and in everything. It affects one thing to the next. So the same thing happens with my body. If there is a structural issue a foundational issue with my feet, then I start to see issues in my ankles and in my knees and in my hips and in my shoulders and so on. Because even something down here, as small as just this, can affect the way the rest of my body reacts to that. So we want to make sure that those kinds of things um, we're fixing if we have them and number two, we're avoiding if we don't have them yet. So the very first thing that we do is to activate, or I'm sorry, um, mobilize the foot. I have a lacrosse ball here. If you have a golf ball or something smaller at home, you can use that, but something that's relatively solid because we're going to be pushing into it. So I'm going to be standing up to do this mobilization. I'm going to get the ball just kind of underneath um, the arch of my foot, and I'm going to go back and forth. So the points of contact that I'm looking for, I'm kind of looking for, I'll come a little bit closer so we can see. In the bottom of the foot, we're talking kind of the, um, just right under the ball of the foot, we can start to get here. We can get along the arch of our foot. We can get on the outside of our foot and we can get just kind of right along um, the heel here. So any of this tender stuff at the bottom of our foot is stuff that we wanna be rolling at. Um, so I get myself situated on the ball here. You just make sure that I'm stable. If I am unstable, I should probably be next to a wall or something that I can stabilize myself against because it's not a good idea to put ourselves in an unstable position before we're ready for it. Um, so from here, I put as much weight onto that ball as I can manage, hands on my hips or wherever is comfortable for me, and I just push, spend a little bit of time here, slowly roll to different points of my foot so you can see me from the side. I start rolling back toward the, uh, the heel of my foot a little bit more the heel maybe I get to the outside now I can spend a decent amount of time on both feet so I might spend a solid minute or so just working on this foot maybe I add a little extension and flexion of the toes to get a little bit extra but really what we want mostly is for the foot to be relaxed so that I can dig as deep into the fascia as humanly possible so I get both feet first that's the biggest thing now if you're in the gym and you're using the lacrosse balls you can use our nifty spray bottles just to make sure that you're wiping them down afterward just so that they stay nice and clean for everybody else who's using them um, we spend a deal great deal amount of time here and then we move on to the next thing so once our feet are mobile then we can work into the activation portion. So my feet are a little bit less stiff now because I just rolled them. The next thing we're gonna do is called a short foot activation. I'm going to come closer, you won't be able to see my face. And we're going to work on activating the foot itself. All right, so the activation portion. So we can see my feet a little bit better here. So I'm going to start, I'll show you on an angle. I'm gonna start with my feet kind of parallel to each other. So let's say I'm working with my left leg first. I'm gonna bring my right foot back so that my toes are right next to my heels. And I'm actually gonna keep both feet flat on the ground for now, a little bit less of the, the you know, on the ball of the foot. Left leg, I wanna make sure that that knee is nice and soft. So as I go through this exercise, I don't wanna be like shearing the meniscus in my knee. I wanna make sure that my knee is nice and it's good to go. So from here, 
I'm going to create my tripod. So what that means is I'm going to lift my toes off the ground. I'm going to spread them apart as much as I can, and then I'm going to bring them back to the ground. So this is me creating my tripod. From there, what I'm going to do is push my toes into the ground as much as possible, and then I'm going to relax. So hopefully you can see from there, when I push, it's called short foot. Essentially what it looks like is my foot is shortening. So if we look at the, the height of my arch, it kind of comes up a little bit when I push into the ground. It's almost like my toes and my heel get a little bit closer together. Now I don't have to recreate my tripod between every rep, but I do need to make sure that I'm relaxing in between. Maybe I hold this position for 10 seconds or so and I continue on. Now what I'm thinking about when I'm activating short foot is not so much scrunching the toes in as much as just pushing into the ground. So if I put like a piece of paper or something under your toe, you would push so hard that I wouldn't be able to pull the piece of paper back out from under your toe. Not so much that you're trying to then pull the piece of paper away from me. So it's not this kind of action, it's just push into the ground as much as possible. So I would get a couple reps on each side. We probably wanna do, you know, maybe 10 reps or so on one foot and then we switch, we do them on the other foot. Single leg is the best way for us to start because we don't always have the coordination to do both feet at the same time. So if I just focus all of my energy on one foot, then I'm good to go. Um, so I would start there. Let's make sure that we master this stuff. I will bring you guys more information on how to activate short foot in other things. Um, after you go through this, just the short foot alone, we should feel that there's more activity, a little bit more strength in our feet. So. Uh, this kind of thing, you definitely want to do this before your workouts to make sure that your feet are active. So if we're sprinting or we're jump roping or we're squatting or we're deadlifting, whether it's a jumping movement, whether it's a um, stable movement where we're just staying on the ground, we still need the feet to be active because again, we need that strength from our foundation to make sure that the rest of our body is ready to move. Um, so make sure that we're doing that, I would, like I said, at least before your workout, but these are things that we can do three, four times a day. If we're living in shoes, if we've been diagnosed with plantar fasciitis, we need to make sure that we're addressing the issue of the foot and not just making it worse. So to have an orthotic in our, in our shoe because we have plantar fasciitis, that makes sense for some of us, but that doesn't mean that we can't start to fix the problems that we're creating. And this is one way to start fixing those problems. Um, this is not the end all be all. This doesn't mean that like for the rest of your life, I want you to just like take your shoes off and you're not wearing them. I'm not saying stop wearing your orthotics. I'm saying let's build some strength in our foot to make sure that we're better capable of living our life and doing better in our workouts. Thanks. So if you have any questions on any of this stuff, you can ask me, you can ask any one of your coaches. Um, otherwise, we will see you guys very soon.